Okay, it is D-Day this morning for the roaches. We found uh, two or three in particular in Michael's room. And that has created on field trip a little bit of a, not a panic, but we want to get rid of these things. So you can see in Michael's room, it's probably no surprise. There might be a roach or two hiding in here. So we're gonna fog this place up while we're gone and do the best we can to uh, cut these guys short. Make it a check-in, but you don't check out. Yeah, we don't count out, so it's been full on busy. Sorry, Dad. Just set it off on the table. Cause you don't. Okay. This bomb's way in there. It's all like foggy and everything. You see it all in there? Fogged up. Yeah, those roaches are dead. It's about 6.30 in the morning and we are en route to the ferry. We're going to be heading to Banda Ata this morning, which is basically that direction, um, about 45 minute ferry ride. And our plans are to see the mosque and to also see the Tsunami Museum. So we've got a full day ahead of us. We may or may not spend the night, we're not sure yet, but we're going to uh, have a good time and uh, it's early. So we had to get up and do the roach bomb this morning and so that was a lot of... Uh, heavy breathing as we were running around the boat with the uh, smoking um, foggers and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. So we're hungry, want to find some place to eat breakfast in, uh, where are we going to eat? What's the name of that place again? Banda Ache. Well, Banda Ache, but hopefully in Sabang we'll find something to eat. So that's it for this morning and we're off and trying to find the taxi to get out of here. The tsunami that hit Banda Ache in 2004 was triggered by a 9.1 magnitude earthquake about 60 miles away. A series of large tsunamis up to 30 meters or 100 feet high resulted from this underwater seismic activity. The tsunamis killed an estimated 228,000 people in 14 different countries. The city of Banda Aceh reported the largest number of victims in the area, approximately 31,000. This event was one of the deadliest natural disasters in recent history. It is here, in Banda Aceh, that we explore the city of 300,000 inhabitants to learn more about the tragedy and meet the people that survived such a great loss only 15 years earlier. It's just after 7 a.m. and this is the view of the market outside the Palabuhan, which is the uh, port where the ferry goes from Sabang to Banda Aceh. We're selling uh, nasi goreng in little bags. They've got uh, snake fruit up here. This lady's got snake fruit that she's selling. And it's a nice little market. There is no uh, Starbucks. There is no uh, decent place for a more traditional breakfast, but we will make it work. That was kind of funny, we got to, uh, as we were going through the security check here for the ferry, we got to bump into our friend from customs, who was very nice and shook our hands, and it was really, he's a really nice guy, so it was kind of nice to uh, um, have him uh, shake our hands and Except welcome us to he assumed, Banache. He assumed we were going to the mall in Banache. I guess that's why most people go to Banache is go to the mall, but nope, we're doing sightseeing, so here we are. Peanuts. <laughs> Is that breakfast, honey? Mm-hmm. Good? Nasi goreng for breakfast. Yeah. The Indonesian way. <laughs> There's egg in there. Rice. Noodles. Can I try to go for a main job, a little bit difficult. The tsunami come, I lost my family, 21 people. 21 people? Yeah. My uncle, my brother, my parent, my, wow. my nephew. Wow. Because I live in close to the beach. Okay. One kilometer from the beach. One kilometer from the beach. Yeah, one kilometer from the beach. And the higher 50 meter. Wow. Yeah. I live That's in terrible. West Ate. Little okay. bit far from here. Yeah. You know, I taught you before, Lunga Beach. I live yes. There. Okay. That's where you live, yeah. where the tsunami. 80% percent the loose people. Wow, yeah. that's terrible. I'm still lucky, Mark. Yeah. I, I can swim in. Sorry. 
I can swim in just 15 minutes. After 15, I lose control. I don't know where I am. You know, eight hours I lose control. After eight hours, I open my. I ask the somebody where are you be. The somebody tell me in the hospital. Wow. I didn't know who oh. to pick me up. Wow. Someone picked you up. Yeah. Mm. Someone, but I don't That's know. So scary. Yeah. yeah. That's terrible. And it's broken, broken. And then my big boss Deborah Halwe. He's from Colorado. He's going to here. I walking Hello. in the boat. Oh, that's when you work for the Red Cross. Yeah. Okay. American Red Cross, go to here and the job in the American Red Cross. Okay. And give for me a little bit of rehabilitation because I'm still traumatic. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Okay. This one my tuk tuk. Oh, oh nice. this is a nice tuk tuk. Yeah. You and you can stay there. That's okay. very nice. Okay. Hello! Hello! Pagi Pagi! Yes, yes! After meeting our guide, Awe, we are soon off to our first stop, riding in his custom-made tuk-tuk to see the sights of Banda Aceh. Mark has the luxury of hanging on for dear life on the back of the attached motorcycle as we zip around town. <laughs> so, we just arrived via tuk-tuk from the um, ferry dock and we are now at the site where a massive container ship, ship? break ship. a massive ship has washed ashore from the tsunami in 2004 it was in the harbor where we came in by ferry and it washed us in inland five kilometers when it was carried by the tsunami wave so it's crazy to see it so far inland and we're gonna go see um, just look on inside and check it out it's been here since the tsunami obviously and now they've turned it into a memoriam probably not anymore Inside the museum, we learn a lot more about the magnitude of the damage from the tsunami. There are many people inside, most of them Malaysians, visiting and learning about the tragedy of their home country. After the museum tour, we were thirsty and a bit hungry. Our driver told us about a friend of his, whose coffee shop was having a grand opening. It sounded like a great idea, so we jumped back into the tuk-tuk and sped around town to Hope Kopi. Here, we would observe a very unique way to make a cup of coffee, Aceh style. Well, we just arrived here to this place that's friends of our driver. He just opened a coffee shop here in Aceh. They're famous for what's called Kopi Aceh. So we're gonna try out some uh, special Kopi Aceh, which is a very fancy way to say it's a uh, local coffee that is um, poured through some big sort of, uh, basically a pantyhose filter of some sort for the coffee. It should be good to try, so I'm gonna give it a shot. See how it goes. Copiace? I do. You get a copiace? Copiace. So, and you want a copiace, yes? Yeah, yeah, it's copiace. Okay. Hope Copy is packed because it's the grand opening. All coffee and treats are complimentary. We look around at the hustling waiters and smiling faces of the patrons. It is quite the experience. Our guide Awe is happy to introduce us to his friends, some of them important politicians, and even a general in the army. It seems everyone is making an appearance to enjoy a free stout cup of Kopi Ache. Mark goes over to thank the owner of the Hope Kopi for the hospitality and treats. As a gift, the owner gives him one of the Hope Kopi t-shirts. It's a very nice memento, and Mark is thankful for his generosity. After our uh, nice Ace Cope or Cope Ace, we're now going to walk down to the uh, local Pasar, which is a local market, and uh, see what we can find down there and just kind of enjoy some other sights and sounds of uh, Banda Ace.
The local market is full of fresh produce and fresh meat. This guy here could clean a chicken in no time. It almost makes me hungry, watching him effortlessly cut, gut, and prep this very fresh, still a bit warm, slightly slimy chicken. Yummy Thank to you. my tummy. Okay. Well, where have we been? What have we been doing, honey? So this is our what third stop? On our tour, we just Third start. we just got done having coffee and then enjoying a little walk through the Pasar, the uh, fresh market. We saw the meat market and the fish market, which was a sight. lots of chicken. <laughs> lots of chicken. Not at KFC. It was like the real chop them up. It looked like we could hold them up and squeeze them. So now we are at our next stop, the Ache Tsunami Museum, and this is the place where they they built after the tsunami to just remember the events and just it's big. Yeah, it's it a, was big a big museum. Um, everywhere we've been, it's been really fascinating because we've met lots of people that have actually ex had family members killed. It was a huge, huge, I think a lot of people still are traumatized by it. And when they share their stories, they get emotional. emotional and, it's been yeah. 15 years. And I hope that we're gonna learn about the tragedy that happened, but also about the hope that's been rebuilt here. Yeah. So. Hope copy. Hope copy. Hope copy. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. was it TripAdvisor, I think. The reviews on TripAdvisor were saying that some people were boo-hooing about... They like, said it was very dirty and like, it's like a rust Falling apart, falling wasn't apart. well taken care of or maintained. But and then, this is Indonesia. This is crazy amazing for Indonesia. Yeah. This is really like, <laughs> good. Wow. It's amazing. The architecture is really beautiful and modern and it's yeah. Based on our Indonesia experiences, this is very well maintained and clean. So we've yeah. enjoyed it. It's really well done. And the exhibits are really nice too. That one we just saw with the art. It's like um, all paper. It was all cut paper to remember the tsunami. So was, that was really cool. So after our, all our touring this morning, we have decided we're hungry. So it's time for lunch. And what better place to have some mie than in Aceh? So we're gonna have mie Aceh. Special, I'm sure, recipe in Aceh. We'll try it out. Not a whole lot of hand washing, probably, but it gets cooked, so it's all good. Is Elizabeth good? Good. Michael? Spicy? A little bit? A little bit. <laughs> so 70 all. How much was that? 70 all. So for five meals it was 70,000. And 100,000 is 7 dollars. No. So, you know, so if right. that was about a dollar per meal. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good. And it was great. So here's actually a boat that landed on top of this house and they've turned it into some sort of a, of a uh, almost museum and uh, pretty amazing never taking it off the top of the house it's kind of crumbling 
Look at that. It's just amazing how powerful these tsunamis can be. I think that this was all underwater at one point. Our final stop of the day is to the main mosque of Banda Aceh. This mosque survived the tsunami with minimal damage, even when the surrounding buildings were completely destroyed. All right, so we are now at the mosque, and uh, Sarah. For you. Yeah. And, and Sarah is getting herself ready, and Elizabeth will be next with their uh, head covers, long sleeve shorts. No problem. Sarong. He just told Tara you can't wear pants. You have sarong? So she has a sarong. How do I do that? It's not many experiences get on her. Oh, you're trying to me. I can decide. So you get yourself set up. I see you. So there's Sarah and Elizabeth, hardly recognizable out here with their uh, full headdress on and uh, long pants, but um, on skirts. We are finally here at the mosque. This is the mosque that survived the um, big uh, Aceh tsunami 2004, so it uh, was not badly damaged. And uh, there it is. So we finally made it the final stop on our tour. The huge mosque that is the, the central mosque for all of the Aceh people. Uh, the marble floors are steamy on our feet, but the view is just amazing. We, it's hard to take it all in. You have black domes and uh, white marble building. It's, it's just fantastic. And everybody's here just kind of hanging out. There's lots of groups of people just sitting down in the shade enjoying conversation together and it's just really cool to be here so after spending an hour at the mosque we are ready to get going back home to field trip first we want to find a nice cold coconut to replenish us before our ferry ride thankfully our guide Awe knew just the perfect spot always one always close this guy knows how to crack open a coconut. He's like fast and furious.
Mr. Hansen. All right. Thank you. Very best ferry to go back to pull away. <laughs> On our way. On our way to pull away. Are you gonna sleep this trip or? No. Nope. You've no had snoring. your you've had your copy ache, so you're no snoring. No snoring this just, time. Just <laughs> relaxation. Okay. All right. Without embarrassing my family. That's All right. The plan. Hey!